Hey, everybody. Welcome to the official Do Good Better podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Kirby. And of course, we talk with people who are going to help small and medium-sized nonprofits do good better. And the best place to get that particular advice, individuals who run small, medium-sized nonprofits. With my guest today, Karen Lauer, she is the uh, executive director of the uh, Barnesville Area Community Fund. I've known uh, Karen for a while now. I find her to be delightful, and I know she's going to have some tips and tricks for you. Karen, welcome to the official Do Good Better podcast. Well, hi, Patrick. It's great to be with you today. I'm very excited uh, to chat with you. Uh, I know you've got some really kind of fun stuff going on uh, at the Community Fund. But first, before we get into that, all that all that stuff, uh, when people are kind of clicking on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube, by the way, you should probably subscribe while you're at it here, folks. Um, they want to know who you are and what you do, because they probably don't know all the dirty details. So at a 5,000 foot view, would you be so kind to introduce yourself on who you are, what you do, and why we're talking today? Sure. Well, um, I'm Karen Lauer, and as Patrick said, I'm with the Barnesville, Minnesota uh, Community Fund, and the Community Fund has been around for 30 years, so we're kind of a long-standing nonprofit group. We work in cooperation with West Central Initiative out of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and it's a, it's a great relationship. Uh, and we're really making things happen out in Barnesville. So a lot of people don't even know where Barnesville is. And we're 23 miles east of Fargo-Moorhead, just a short jaunt down the interstate. And we're a growing community of about 2,600 people. Uh, I've been in the community for about 30 years. And I'll tell you what, Patrick, what makes small communities happen is committed volunteers and we have the absolute best in Barnesville. Pretty great. I've uh, well, I've been there a lot since uh, I've got relatives there. So I, uh, I travel there very often. Can you describe kind of what some of the programs and services that the community fund provides or things that the community fund helps um, sort of facilitate? Yeah, you know, Patrick, uh, we kind of do it all that, you know, simply put, we're touching every single corner of the community. And so some of the things that we do is we have a grant pocket and we provide grants to other nonprofits in Barnesville. Um, we have a school foundation and through the school foundation, we do a whole bunch of stuff. One of the things that maybe of interest is we're organizing an all school reunion this year. Um, we on an annual basis have a hall of honor where we recognize alumni that have gone forth and made a difference. We provide grants to the school district to help teachers um, with equipment needs, start new programs. Um, we also have a humanitarian pocket where we help families in need. We have a revolving loan fund that helps uh, businesses start up and expand. Um, what else are we up to? Um, those are probably some of the, the major things that we're up to. I like that your list uh, of things you don't do are much uh, shorter than the things that you actually do, which I appreciate uh, very much. Uh, it's a challenge being executive director or running any sort of particular nonprofit, um, even if it's just a community fund. Um, but there's probably a, a story or two that you remember uh, that uh, during those uh, sort of hard days, you go, oh yeah, that's why we do it. Do you have one of those stories that kind of push you through the, uh, the struggles of the day-to-day -day operations of a nonprofit leader? Well, you, you know, um, one of our models, Patrick, is, is making a, a difference um, by touching people's lives. And whether it's our board or myself, I think what drives us um, are some of the heartwarming thank you notes we get from people whose lives truly have been changed because of a program of the Barnesville Area Community Fund. And you know, one of the things that I, I didn't touch on uh, is something that, that we've been doing for a long time called Leadership Barnesville. 
And so uh, we determined many, many years ago that if we provide the encouragement, the confidence, and the skills to help ordinary people be extraordinary, that Barnesville would be a better community. So we've had about 180 people go through Leadership Barnesville. And time and time again, people tell me that program changed my life. That program enabled me to go out and help other people and to make a difference and to touch other people's lives. Um, people that or students that have received scholarships through the Barnesville Area Community Fund, um, we receive heartwarming thank you notes from those individuals that say, without that support, I wouldn't have been able to move forward. And it's real interesting, Patrick, because you think about the financial component of receiving a scholarship, but so often these letters say, it's because you believed in me that made the world of difference, that they're coming out of high school, they're going to NDSU, this huge campus, and they're, they're just a nobody in, in their mind. But because they got that scholarship, they became a somebody. And that allowed them to embark on their college career feeling differently. It's amazing about how just being a cheerleader is some of the, uh, the uh, you know, sort of extra special thing that you get to do every single day, which is pretty, pretty fantastic. I know that we've all kind of experienced a, uh, a COVID crisis of, uh, you know, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, but is the Barnesville Community Fund, like, how, how has that had a couple of challenges and what have you been doing to kind of overcome some of those? And it doesn't have to be COVID related, but it can be. Uh, but what are some of the challenges that you guys have faced uh, recently? Well, you know, Patrick, I would, I would say COVID didn't really impact us very much other than during that period of time, uh, we went virtual with um, all of our board meetings. Um, so that in itself, for anyone that experienced that, you know, we had to figure out how to unmute ourselves, and, you know, how I was going to get those presentations up on the screen. But, you know, what, what came out of that was some pretty interesting stuff because uh, meeting virtually really has its, its benefits. I mean, people could be sitting on their couch. Um, and they could be logging in. One of the things that the community fund did during that time was they were part of a group that started a child care task force. So child care is a challenge for communities large and, and small. And because the community fund is very responsive to community needs, we wanted to be part of this child care task force. So we had just a ton of virtual meetings mm. and uh, that was great. We had a lot of great discussion. Um, what came out of that was we last year had a fantastic child care appreciation week where we had the mayor sign resolutions and we brought we hand delivered gifts from our businesses to our child care providers. They got signed certificates from the mayor that they put up on the wall. And that all came about because of these virtual meetings that we had, that if we would have had to have these people uh, come together and actually meet in person, I don't think we would have gotten that engagement. You know, they were able to sit at home on, on their couch on stormy, you know, December evenings. And we had some great ideas, some great involvement. Um, we planted some seeds that we needed more child care in the community. And as a springboard from the, these community fund activities, the EDA stepped in, put in place some grant funds. And Patrick, I'm just thrilled to tell you that over the course of the last five months, we have three brand new home-based childcare providers. 
And, you know, it all came about because of COVID and us getting together, sharing some ideas and making things happen. I love it. I've always loved your abundance mindset. And I always love the fact that you've got this rising tide helps all ship sort of attitude as well. Uh, but I really like your embracing of virtual meetings. It's the most inclusive way to get as many people as possible who have really, really busy lives and can't, you know, can't afford another 20 minute commute back and forth to do X, Y, and Z solves all problems. And turns out you've got some pretty good ideas coming from it too. Speaking of good ideas, I know you've been doing this a long time. I know you've been in the community a long time. I know you've worked with a lot of nonprofits. So if you would be so kind, Karen, to give uh, our listening audience, whether they be a nonprofit executive director or just somebody who's just trying to get their feet in the door, is there a tip or a trick that you could give a nonprofit leader today that helps them do good better? Yep, it's, it's very simple, Patrick. Um, you know, I've worked with a ton of fundraising. I like to say I've worked with a, a whole bunch of nonprofit groups. And so it's, it's interesting when people say, oh, we need to do fundraising. So let's go get those, those candy bars. And oh, by the way, let's send some letters. So how about we put a whole bunch of lists together and send out some letters and tell people we need some, some money. Stop this nonsense. If you need money, just go talk to some people. What? Share, share your story. Share what? your story with, with passion. Ask them to consider, would you like to join me in doing good and making a difference? Patrick, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I helped a local group in town last fall. They had a dream, they had a vision and they needed to raise $45,000. And they came to me and they just said, we just, you know, we have this dream. It would be so wonderful if we had a grand piano for our new school auditorium, but we need $45,000. We just, we're sure we can't do it, but we thought we would talk to you and maybe you had some ideas on how you could help us raise $45,000. We identified some people that we were gonna talk to. We were either gonna, and again, COVID was going on, so much of this was over the phone. So we'd, we'd get on the phone, we'd call these people. Patrick, I kid you not, in six weeks, we had raised $60,000. The grand piano is ordered. It's coming next week. I can't believe it's that simple, Karen. That just, it should be more complicated than this. It should involve way too many more uh, cooks in the kitchen. That's the best piece of advice ever is keep it simple and just pick up the phone and start asking people enthusiastically and tell your story. They're about to get aligned and then you just let them pick a choose if they want to or not. It's just that easy. It's that freaking easy. How do people get a hold of you, Karen? I think people are going to want to either get to know you a little bit better. They're going to want to go and donate or support or try to figure out how they can uh, be associated now, with you. Even if they don't live in Barnesville, well, how do they get a hold of you in the Barnesville Area Community Fund? Sure. Well, Patrick, we're, uh, we're on Facebook, Barnesville Area Community Fund. We have our own website, BarnesvilleAreaCommunityFund.com. And, you know, we just talked about picking up the phone and calling someone. They can easily do that. 218-354-2145. That phone is right here and I'm going to pick it up and, and help whoever I can in whatever way I can. Of course, if people want to send me an email, it's Lauer at B-V-I-L-L-E-M-N dot net. We'll put all of those in the show notes below. So get, get clicking after this uh, show. Go click on uh, all the links that we provide below. While you're at it, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, what on earth are you doing? Get, get on it right now. Subscribe and then share and then like. And this, this is the kind of stuff that we do every single so, week, for goodness sakes. Yeah, so Patrick, yeah. I mean, 
people spend a lot of money to get energized. Yeah. And all they have to do is sub subscribe to this podcast. This is free energy. I mean, what we're all we're all bogged down. We all need to be encouraged. You know, we all have challenges, but um, we just need that that fresh perspective that you provide us on every single podcast. You're delightful. The checks in the mail for that endorsement, and uh, I will drink enough caffeine for everybody, uh, guaranteed every single week. You're the best. Uh, make sure you go and click on all the links, everybody. This is really fun, um, and it shows that no matter how big a community is, uh, the impact uh, can be unbelievably large. So, Karen, thanks so much for what you do. Thanks so much for uh, all your leadership opportunities that you've been giving everybody. And thanks for helping other nonprofits do good as well. So it's a uh, it's a mindset that I don't think a lot of people have, where you don't have this competitive nature. You're like, I'm going to help everybody. That's a pretty cool thing to have. And thank you so much for being a guest here on the official Do Good Better podcast. Thanks, Patrick. See you soon.